As promised, we've flown out to Italy Wait. to have a little look at the manufacturing processes behind the excellent Ludum Palazzoli XC socket range. But before we get to look at some of those really interesting procedures and processes, what we're going to do is just review one or two of the key points of this range, Gaz. So what sort of things are we excited about on here? So I've got the plug and you've got the socket and yep. we know there's a unique feature about the two when we marry them Absolutely. together. So if I insert that and you locate it for me. Very so good. So we've got that in there and then it's just a matter of making sure that's lined up and fully seated. Yep. Now we could, if we want to twist that and lock it in position, that will currently pull out. Yep. But in a world first, Ludum Palazzoli have manufactured a product with a switch incorporated into the socket. We so like that. That's a world first, and that's really exciting. And once that is turned on, can't pull it out. that will now not come out of there. So not only is it controlling the flow of current through here, it means it can't be disconnected under load which is obviously a really good safety feature. And something we've looked at back in the UK, but we're yeah. here in Italy to see how we put together the elements of this plug and socket. So shall we go through and see some of those processes, Joe? Let's go and have a look. So then, when we're talking about sockets and plugs, Joe, we're talking about one of the most key ingredients to them being yep. the actual material that we connect to. Yep. In this case, copper, and you've got... I've got brass here. This is a, a brass rod, or the world's longest earth electrode, is what it looks like. I don't think you can see that out of shot there. It's, it's quite impressive. Uh, and we've also got a third material that goes into a lot of connections these days, Gaz. We've got steel as well. Absolutely. It comes in different forms, doesn't it, Joe? Yep. We've got behind us, we've got rolls. Yeah, we've got it on rolls. Uh, this has been stripped from a sheet. Okay. And we've got very large copper sheets that are just behind the camera there. And we've also got the rod formation as well. And it depends on what use the material is being put to yep. in the component. So for example, in round pin plugs, rod is perfect. So then, Joe, how do we turn your brass rod into electrical components? Because in front of me here, I've got a socket contact, and what have yep. you got? I've got here the plug contact. We also refer to this as the pin. Yeah. And the machine behind us, this CNC machine, is programmed to turn out this fantastic pin. There's another CNC lathe just the other side of this one that's turning out the socket contacts as well. Okay, so how does that process work then? It's very simple. We've got a bar feeder behind us, so we stack that up with the brass rod. The machine then takes that in, it's programmed up with all of the settings that it needs in order to produce this particular bit of kit. And what it does is it will cut that to length, it will turn this piece of rod and uh, trim that down to the right okay. diameter. Wow. It'll put that chamfer on the end and it will drill the hole for the mm -hmm. conductor and also drill and thread the holes for the screws that are going to hold that contactor in place. In one process? In one process and it's all automated. So once it's all set up, you just press the start button and it will just turn out an entire crate of these. So then, Joe, we've seen how we take a brass rod and turn it into contacts or pins for a plug and socket arrangement. Yep. We've now got copper and brass sheet. What are they used for? So this is turned into the contacts and the switches inside our isolating devices, yep. our switching devices. So this piece of sheet material will be put into a power press, which are the big green machines that you can see behind us, and it will punch out shapes from this sheet, which turn into the blades that connect and disconnect our electrical devices. So at the first stage of the process, I've got my brass pin, Joe. Yep. What's happening? So those have gone into a barrel, and that barrel is now going to be sealed up, and it's going to be taken and dipped into various different baths of different chemical solutions that are going to perform various different treatments to the pin. A little nervous at this stage, Joe. As I you can should be. see clearly connections here electrically and yep. I believe massive currents flowing through those. Yeah. For what reason? Absolutely, because this is the part where the electroplating actually takes place. So currents are being fed uh, through this uh, bath of material and what's happening is down the sides there you can see the sacrificial anodes made of the material 
that this is being coated in. We've also got a solution in there as well, which will include uh, tiny little particles of the coating material. And as that barrel is just spun round and round inside there, what's happening is that the chemical reaction is taking place inside, and that's attracting a very thin layer of the molecules of the coating material onto here. So when that comes out of there, and has been through a cleaning up process, this will be finely covered in a nice thin, even layer of nickel. So what's the advantage of coating this in nickel then, Joe? There's a couple of things really. Uh, the first and most important one is it will reduce the resistance of the electrical connection when this is made. The reason for that is it reduces the surface resistance of the material, making a better connection. And the other thing that it'll do as well is it'll increase the resistance to corrosion from external influences and make sure that it doesn't develop such a bad surface patina. So we looked at the conductive parts of our industrial plug and socket joke, yep. and we've moved through to this part of the plant. What's happening over here? What we're gonna do now is start looking at the insulating parts of our plug and sockets. So we're here in the injection molding shop. And for those of you who don't know what injection molding is, although I'm sure you all do, it's where liquid plastic is forced into a mold by a series of uh, tubes. And inside there, there is the shape of the object that you want to produce, a bit like a jelly mold. So when the plastic's pushed inside there, it will set, it will harden, it will then be ejected from the mould and it will come out looking like that. So the process behind me is making these socket covers. Yep. They're red, they're 400 volts, they're three phase. But what's special about this part of the process? Well, of course, we're still thinking about ingress protection. We want to make sure that we're not getting moisture inside our socket outlet. So this needs a gasket. Now, again, we might think of that as being a separate component, might be prone to falling off there. But what's really clever is that the machine behind us combined in its manufacturing process, the molding of both the cover itself okay. and also the gasket at the same time. So it injects two completely different kinds of plastic into the mold. They then bond together to form the plastic cover, but also the rubber gasket inside there as well. And that's in one process. One process, it's really, really good. We can also see some waste material here, is that yep. true? Well, it is waste. It's technically, it's called the sprue that comes out of uh, plastic injection molding. However, it's not technically waste because what will happen, this big box that's full of the sprue will be reground back to its constituent parts and fed back into the machine. And so it can just be reused again. So we've got a fascinating process happening behind us. We've got the termination cage this side, Joe. What have yep. we got your side? On my side, we've got the tiny little screws that go into that termination cage. And we've got an actual screwdriver effectively in yep. there, terminating or screwing each of them in one at a time yep. over and over again. Sounds simple, but the kind of physics involved in getting the screw and the terminal lined up absolutely perfectly and driving it in, sorting the screws into the right position, the cages into the right position. It's an incredibly complex piece of machinery and the speed that it's moving at is actually pretty impressive. Uh, and it's an absolutely fascinating process to watch. You can watch it all day, it's brilliant. So we've gone all around the factory, Joe, and you've taught me through all the processes to make the parts yep. to make an industrial plug and socket, but I haven't seen anything yet that looks like this. Mm. As you say, we'd know what the individual components look like, but I think we need to find somewhere where they all come together and we see what the finished product looks like. So I think we need to find the finished product assembly area. So we've moved through to the final assembly of either the plug or the socket, Joe. Yep. And that's happening behind us. It's not quite straightforward as we think though, is it? No, we've got an excellent team of assemblers behind us putting together all those disparate components that we saw being manufactured and turning them into the final product, whether that be a socket or a plug. And they're making it look really easy. So I think you and me, guys, we need to have a go at putting one of these together and seeing if we can assemble it correctly. And if we do get it assembled correctly, when we go back to the machine in the far side, yep. 
it will give us a smiley face, Joe. Yes, there's some very clever testing equipment there that's going to show us we've got everything lined up correctly before it makes the final sealing of the, uh, the plug-out socket. So I think we have a go. Okay. So what have we got laid out on the bench before us here, Gaz? Well, what I think we've got from the colour red, we've got three phases. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got a three phase and I think you've got five pins. I do indeed. So we've got three phase, neutral and the protective conductor. And one yep. of your pins is larger, so we've got the earth pin as well. Absolutely. So this is definitely a plug because we've got the gazinta parts, not the gazonta parts. So uh, we'll be using those. And it's this looks quite simple, but actually there are some little tricky things. If you look at these pins here, you can see that they're all slightly different in some way. So they look the same initially, but actually there's two different kinds of pin there. And I've got to put in the terminal screws, so I've got to put the steel terminal screws in, and yeah. the one for the protective conductor is yeah. the one that's a little trickier. Absolutely. So I've got to make sure I get it around the right way, so I've got to just check that I've got the screw uh, um, entrance points here, so yeah. I'm going to drop those in. Some of them are easier than others, so yeah. I'm going to drop them straight in. So that's a nice one, we like that one. And part of the testing equipment we saw over the other side will actually check that those little uh, chambers there are in the right way round. They'll make sure that they're facing the right way and they're correctly sighted. Okay, this is the trickier one. So we push it in upright and then we fold it down. That's the easiest. That's yeah, nice. look at that. I've done that well. So I'm wow. hopefully going to get a smiley face when we go yeah. through to the next section. Just I think you might get the offer of a job. Gary, yeah. yeah. you've done that so well. Fantastic. Can, we'll can, we, can we complete it? Well, let's have a look. So I'm going to go with the earth pin straight away and get that one out of the way because we know where that one's going to go. So that's going to go in there like that. Okay. And then if I remember rightly, I want to put uh, that one in there like that. No, nope, I've got that wrong straight away. So in the other side, there we go. And I need an, one on that side, one there, and one there. Now they all went in nice and easily, so I think they're the right way around. So just a matter of now taking it over and seeing yep. if we can get ourselves our first smiley face. Let's get a smiley face and see if the ladies over there laugh at us. Well, John, I'm genuinely nervous as we go to the mounting and control <laughs> process because we're ready to see if we can get a smiley face. Yeah, so we're going to put the components into the machine. Uh, we're going to go through the operation process and we're going to see if we've got everything lined up properly. So uh, I think maybe uh, now's the moment to hand it over. Come on. Okay. Thank you. All right, so both pieces have now gone onto the machine. Okay, and is being assembled. So yours is up first. Mine's up first. That looks like a smiley face to me. Happy days. I okay. know oh, it's, it's being put together, Gary. Yeah, I know. Pressure's on me. It had better be right, <laughs> because it ain't coming apart. Look at that, and... Yes. Smiley face. Smiley face. Excellent. I shall Thank send you, you my CV, and hopefully <laughs> might have a new job. So, Joe, fresh off the... Uh smiley face behind us yeah. that must mean something to us so when i look at the terminals in the back of it i got a smiley face for what well yep. i got a smiley face for having five present yep i had the smiley face also for having the screw head located in the right position okay so that's what i got mine for and i turn it over yourself uh, i got five pins present so it's checking that they're there and it's also checking that the blades of those five pins are in the correct orientation as well. Okay. So really, it's checking presence and position. And then just before it pushes this together to make the final connection and turn this into a complete unit, it makes sure that the earth pin there is aligned with the keyway, meaning that that can be plugged into the relevant socket. So we're almost at complete assembly. So we've got to put the back piece on. We've got yes. one of those, Joe. I happen to have one right here. Ah, we've got a little bit of confusion for me here. Okay. So I've got blue and I've got red, <laughs> and I thought we went red for three phase, and we're yeah. going to put a blue back on. What's the thing giving me on that? So we've got the red to indicate that this is a three phase connection. Okay. But this is Palazzoli blue. This is the blue that Palazzoli love and we love, and that indicates that it's just their product. So the red part is the indicator for the voltage. Okay, so a quarter of a turn, we'll put it together. Ready to go, and now we've got a complete assembled Palazzoli industrial plug.